Hello and welcome back to Football Daily. And it's getting near that time of year when many chairmen around the world may be thinking about getting rid of their manager. Here are 10 attempts to force their hand. 10. Bruno Labbadia Wolfsburg's decline has been dramatic. They finished as runners-up 10 points behind Bayern as recently as 2015, with a squad containing the likes of Perisic, Bastos and Kevin De Bruyne. That summer, despite losing De Bruyne to Man City and Perisic to Inter Milan, they managed to secure the signings of Draxler and Dante, and were positive about their future. But that is as good as it got. They finished 8th, 16th and are currently 16th again, just two points clear of relegation, despite turning a £33 million profit on transfers, whilst going through four managers in 18 months. The latest through the door is ex leverkusen Stuttgart and Hamburg boss Bruno Labbadia. Although only appointed in late February, results under the manager have been awful, winning just one of his eight games in charge with five defeats at the time of writing. It seems unlikely that Labadadia is the man to return the 2009 German champions to their former glory. 9. Jose Angel Zaganda Jose Angel Zaganda is a legend at Athletic, and rightly so. The forward played over 250 games for the Bath side between 1991 and 1998, and netted an impressive 0.3 goals per game for the club. Having started his management career at Osasuna, he was put in charge of Athletic's reserve side in July 2011, and four years later he led them back into the second tier after a 19-year absence, whilst promoting players such as Ariza Balaga and Anaki Williams. In May 2017, Valverde, who had led the club to 4th, 7th, 5th and 7th whilst at the club, was announced as Luis Enrique's replacement at Barcelona. Ziganda was promoted to the first team, but it's been far from a smooth transition. They lost in the first round of the Copa del Rey to third-tier side Formentura in November, and are currently languishing in 14th in La Liga, level on points with 17th place Levante. Their main issue has been goals, having scored just 38, an average of 1.1 goals per game, and only three players have scored more than three goals in all competitions. Their 2018 form has been a catastrophe, with just four wins in 17 league games. Although they are safe from relegation, it might well be time for the Bilbao hierarchy to take action before next season. 8. Sinul Gunes On the face of it, Besiktas have had a very good season. They got to the last 16 of the Champions League for the first time since 1986-87, where they lost 8-1 to Bayern and the first leg 5-0. We don't blame them for getting battered by Munich though, who are five-time European champions. They have beaten eight teams by at least five goals this season. But it's their league campaign which has been particularly disappointing. Having won the last two Turkish championships, they are currently fourth, four points behind leaders Galatasaray. The man in charge is Sunul Gunez, a hero in Turkey, having led his country to third in the 2002 World Cup. But far more was expected of a star-studded squad containing Pepe, Charisma, Babel and Negredo. And although they remain unbeaten at home, five damaging losses away have put their title hopes in jeopardy. Now 65 and in his 30th year of management, is time up for Gunez. 7. Peter Stoger Any Dortmund manager over the last six years has had it tough. They've had to watch Bayern stroll to six consecutive titles. At the time of writing, they are 26 points ahead of BVB. But it's fair to say that Peter Stoger, at Phoenix Backer's suggestion on Twitter, hasn't set the world alight. Brought in to replace the outgoing Peter Bosch, who hadn't won in eight and conceded 20 in the process, Stoja initially steadied the ship. BVB may have only lost two of his 16 league games, but they were damaging losses to Bayern and top four rival Schalke, in which his side were totally outclassed and conceded eight goals without reply. A Europa League last 16 defeat to Salzburg angered the fans, but some would say he's had his hands tied. After all, the club have sold Dembele and Dabamyang in the last year, and as a result, Dortmund have struggled for goals with no player getting over six in all competitions. It's not good. At the other end, they have been equally woeful, conceding 42 goals. The last time they conceded more was 2007-8 when they finished 13th. There will no doubt be interest in talented youngsters such as Pulisic and Weigl this summer. And do you really back Stoja to spend the money wisely? 6. Lucien Favre Lucien Favre may be highly thought of, having taken Borussia Mönchengladbach from the brink of relegation to the Champions League and for finishing third with Nice last campaign. They were superb, conceding just 36 goals and only losing two games between August and the start of May. 
but this season they only won 4 out of their opening 14 games. And although they have recovered to 7th in the table, they are 26 points behind last year's total and have scored 18 fewer goals. In Europe, it's not been much better. Having been knocked out of the Champions League playoff 4-0 by Napoli, they lost in the Europa League last 16 to Lokomotiv Moscow, 4-2 on aggregate. They have regressed after 11th, 4th and 3rd place finishes, and with Favre currently winning 42% of his matches, his lowest at any club since 2002, perhaps he isn't the man to lift them out of their current mess. 5. Antonio Conte Thanks to at Munich underscore Drogba for this suggestion, who thinks we should include Antonio Conte. And you can see why. In May 2017, the 48-year-old Italian was on top of the world. He had led Chelsea to the title, finishing with 93 points, at the time the second best tally in Premier League history, and winning 30 games, a then record. A formation change to a 5-2-3 after five games and two losses to Liverpool and Arsenal had reaped incredible rewards, with the Blues going on a 13-match winning run and only dropping points in five of their next 32 matches. But that summer, Conte decided to get rid of Diego Costa, two-time Premier League champion and scorer of 20% of all the Blues League goals over the previous three seasons. The three-time Italian champion was frustrated by the inability of the board to bring in his primary targets and instead hand in players such as Drinkwater, Zappa Costa and Barkley for a combined £71 million, who have made just 17 league starts between them. Chelsea's season has been a disaster, losing nine games to teams including Burnley, Crystal Palace and Watford and scoring a measly 60 goals. Only once this century have they scored fewer than 64. If they don't win the FA Cup, this season will have been a disaster. If he doesn't jump, Conte should be pushed. 4. Gennaro Gattuso At Sif underscore star thinks that Gattuso deserved the sack, and we tend to agree. The AC Milan midfielder, who made 387 appearances for the club between 1999 and 2012, was brought in to replace Vincenzo Montella after he was sacked in November having lost 6 of their opening 14 league matches. To be fair to him, he garnered instant results, with the Rosaneri losing just two of his opening 14 games in charge, with Champions League qualification suddenly a possibility. On the 4th of April, Milan offered Gattuso a three-year contract, and since then they have played six games, winning one, drawing four and losing one, and only scoring four goals. The Rosaneri hierarchy were too quick to appoint a manager whose only Italian managerial experience was six games in charge of Palermo and getting Pisa promoted into Serie B. His eccentric man management style may have led him to short-term rewards, but with their Chinese owners destined to spend heavily once again this summer, surely their wisest move would be to get rid of their 40-year-old manager. 3. Stefan Ruthenbeck FC Cologne boss, 46-year-old Stefan Ruthenbeck, is a virtual unknown, having only played German regional football and never managed in the Bundesliga before this season. His only top-level management credentials was a season in charge of Bully 2 side Firth, when they finished an unremarkable ninth, before being sacked three months into the following campaign. When Ruthenbeck got the job, they were winless after 14 games with only two points. Although things initially picked up with three wins in his first five games, the club have won just twice since. For a side that qualified for the Europa League last season, to be rooted to the bottom of the table, six points adrift with five wins in 32 games, is nothing short of disgraceful. Although Ruthenbeck came in late, he must share the blame for relegating Klon for the first time in five years. Surely someone with experience of the league and of chasing promotions would do a much better job. 2. Jose Gonzalez it was only six years ago that Malaga finished fourth in the Liga under Manuel Pellegrini, with a team containing Di Michelis, Isco, Cazorla and Van Nistelrooy. The following year, they lost in the Champions League quarterfinals to eventual finalist Borussia Dortmund 3-2 on aggregate. Fast forward five years and Malaga have been relegated from the Liga, having won just five league games all season. In early March, they dismissed three-time Greek champion Michel and appointed ex-Beijing Goan head coach Jose Manuel Gonzalez, who had finished ninth in his one season in China. The Malaga fans yearning for improvement have been bitterly disappointed, with the club winning just two of his 16 games in charge. They have scored 23 goals this campaign, having averaged 44 over the last five seasons, and a 13% win percentage at the club would suggest that Gonzalez isn't the man to get Malaga back into the Liga next year. One. David Moyes. Thanks to at Arnie's My Dad and at Chaz SM for suggesting West Ham's David Moyes. And to be honest, it's difficult to argue. 
Still seemingly recovering from calamitous spells in charge of Man United, Real Sociedad and Sunderland, Moyes' attempts to rebuild his reputation are failing. When he took over in November, West Ham were in the relegation zone, and so Moyes does deserve some credit for leading them to 15th, three points clear of the drop zone at the time of writing. The Hammers' poorest defence was conceding 2.1 goals per game under Billich, and things haven't improved, with West Ham conceding at least three goals in 53% of their matches under the former Everton boss. They have conceded 67 goals this season, the worst in the division, and the fourth worst in Europe, behind only Mets, Deportivo and Las Palmas. Having spent £173 million in the last three years and been promised European football when they moved into their new 66,000-seater stadium, Hammers fans deserve much more. Do they, though? So I hope you guys liked that video. Let us know what you thought in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed that, why not check out the video on screen right now? I'm sure it is great. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe.